place that you can go paint and not get harassed or bothered or break the law and get in trouble. So I started coming up here and painting. When I was still uh, looking at the Facebook group, uh, Fixing York, somebody was making a very violent fuss about kids tagging the bridge. You guys, <laughs> you're looking at this the wrong way. This is an opportunity. If we stop trying to struggle with this and keep painting over something where people are gonna keep putting stuff up and instead, make it an open space and invite people to be creative, then we can create a living system that will take care of itself. I mean, you're very fortunate, you know, to have like the legal painting spot, you know, and that has its pros and cons as well. You know, put your time and money and energy into something and maybe somebody goes over it. But now I think, you know, the location has built enough traction. People respect stuff more um, and respect what people, what people are doing up there. It's not a thing for any individual to take credit for when there's a cascade effect that happens. But we can create systems where good stuff continues to happen. And when when you create a space where people can discover creative people, that's a natural outcropping of it. Occasion, like when businesses see what they do and commission them to do murals inside restaurants or, you know, on food trucks and stuff like that. Um, like I'm not involved in setting that up at all, but ideally that should be generating some income for them. The tough thing is the area. This is new to this area, whereas graffiti and street art is not new and very front and center in today's culture, but not so much around here. Um, so, like, there's, there's like, I mean, you ever been to New York? So you see, like, those giant murals on the side of buildings. They're, they're all hand painted. And those dudes are making $150,000. Like, this, this area, that's not going to fly. I mean, when the, the graffiti community around here really started to set off, um, the main reason I did it was I wanted people to have access. I mean, when I came up painting, man, it was like fry line out of Walmart. High pressure, no caps, like extremely difficult to to master. I mean, uh -huh. years to to really master and get control and technique down. Um, I mean, making long straight lines. I mean, you had to be faster than like, and it was. You know, it's muscle memory you build up. Now, I mean, well, not now. I mean, it's been years, but they make low-pressure paint. They make all these different caps for it. I mean, back in the day, you could get caps off a of window cleaner, and caps off an of oven cleaner, and, you know, to get to get different effects. So you're digging through your mom's cleaning supplies, trying out caps, like, ah, oh, let me see what this does. Because I came up with the bright idea to do this, like, kind of very artisy, sputtery kind of outline. So I jammed this rubber grommet up there so okay. I can't push it down all the way. Um, and I guess it's making it leak as well. Okay. Side effects of bright ideas. Uh -huh. Yeah, try and, you know, 
I can paint things extremely clean and perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of got bored with that. So now I'm like, okay, I think kind of like, I mean, like Dolly wouldn't be, I mean, Dolly might be a good example. Like there's just artists and like part of it is so realistic and so perfect and other parts of it are so abstract. And you're like, I know they could paint anything they wanted to. They could make this as clean as they want to. So I admire the ability to let go and do something more abstract and creative and also finding a way to show that like you're clearly capable of either or. It's a conscious decision, uh -huh. not like a limitations of ability. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, you know, like with this, like there's very clean stuff and then the outline is very not, but I think it balances out well. What? Dang. Seeing it up on walls, man, what has your kid had me just, just mesmerized, you know? Just seeing the different color tones and everything, you know, that's, that's what got me into art. Just transforming a simple word into a, a piece, you know? So I pretty much came out here just, to, just for the kids, you know what I mean? Just, just, just something for, I think if some kids see it, give them a little inspiration, maybe they might do it one day. Cause I, started off, I started off drawing and stuff in middle school, high school. I seen all kinds of negative stuff on the bridge, and I just put it, I wanted to change it. I wanted for the kids to, if they see, you know, like I used to start off putting SpongeBob's, Angry Birds, and all kinds of little stuff that you can relate relate to. About seven years ago, I had a lot of stuff in my life going on that I, I didn't feel in control of, and uh, just like the one thing I had going for me that I knew I could control the outcome because of those same issues in my life that I couldn't control. I used to come here as an escape from that and just try to put up positive images for the kids. You know, just things that I feel like if people appreciate their environment, they'll want to take care of them. So I just try to put up things that the positive imagery that the kids that have to go to school and cross this bridge twice a day have to look at. I like giving back to the community. I think it I think it does a lot for people and areas and neighborhoods to see artwork. Um, I don't know. I think whether people even realize it or not, I think everybody inherently likes artwork. I mean, yeah, everybody's into different things, but I think everybody likes artwork. It's, it's beautiful. It may mean something to you. It may remind you of something from your childhood. I mean, art can do so much. Yep, you got it. The kids taking graduation photos and, and band groups taking, you know, they're doing their portraits there and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, that's really nifty. I think that the concept of people who are walking over the bridge every day, getting to have something that's pleasant and interesting to look at um, is a positive. I haven't heard anything about people being loud like late at night hopefully the impact has been mostly positive um and I know that like I liked living very close to a, a creative outlet when they add when they add add yeah, the city gave permission to do that wall, so they just, just do it every chance to get to do it, man. There's no problem or nothing, man. That wall right there is, is blessing for everybody, you know, coming just take what you take pictures, man. A lot of people be coming here taking pictures, they stop, get out their cars, and just snap pictures of man on their phones and everything, you know what I mean? I think the people around there really appreciate the bridge. Um, I know a guy that lives on that street, and I mean, they love the bridge. They love coming out. You know, when you're up there painting, they're always out there talking to you. Hey, man, what's going on? You kind of get to know them. It's, I mean, you got a revolving wall of art outside your house, so yeah. you ain't gonna like it all. It's like, I mean, you're, you know, it's like anything else in life. You're not gonna please everybody.
you know, I've also had people stop by and be like, man, we bought you guys lunch, hand me sandwiches and coffee, and I'm like, thanks, man. Like, I, I was hungry. Like, this is perfect. Stuff you just wouldn't, you know, it's stuff you wouldn't expect. I've made so many friends from this bridge and I think I will. other you know fellow what? artists. Uh, I get in the newspaper, on the news, like on a regular basis now. Mm -hmm. I've gotten validation through my family that used to think I was wasting my time. I'm always getting people to ask me for art and commissions now. Like, I don't appreciate it enough, but this bridge kind of changed my life. Everyone, you have yourself a fantastic evening. Enjoy.